Does everybody know what time it is? <laughs> That's right. Welcome to a brand new season. Bid for Tools is proud to present Tim the Tool Man Taylor. Thank you, Heidi. Welcome to a new season. I think, therefore, I am Tim the Tool Man Taylor. <laughs> of course, you all know my assistant. He eats, therefore, he is Al Borland. Well, we have a sizzling hot show for you today, so let's get cooking. It's barbecue week here on Tool Time. Well, barbecuing goes back to primitive times when cavemen rubbed two sticks together to cook their carcass du jour. <laughs> Nothing like an all-you-can-eat brontosaurus buffet. <laughs> but stay clear of that pudding. Plonko. <laughs> well, nowadays, you can cook your meat on this $3 portable unit or cook like a king with this $35,000 gas cooking unit. Built-in dishwasher, disposal, CD player, and a pinch... <laughs> An automatic hibachi cook. <laughs> but for the purists, there's nothing like charcoal. They think the true measure of a man is how fast he can light his coals. Ah, yeah. <laughs> of course, a woman thinks it's how long a man can keep his coals lit. <laughs> well, there's a gentleman in Indiana who used liquid oxygen, got his charcoal ready in three seconds. Yeah, but there's a very handsome guy right here in Detroit that says he can beat that record. <laughs> Well, you may be wondering how Tim's going to beat that three-second record. Well, I'm not wondering. I got a hold of some of my buddies down at NASA. They gave me their secret. Rocket fuel. <laughs> ah, rocket fuel's made with locks. And this don't go on no bagel, baby. <laughs> this is liquid oxygen with a skosh of hydrogen. And for fun, a little soup song of cilantro for flavor. For trained professionals, please do not try this at home. Ah, there you go. Heidi, my fire starting device, please. Here you go, Tim. Very high tech. It's a stick. <laughs> 2.6 seconds. Woo! A new world's record. Tim, it's a little out of control. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Tim, Don't keep away. Keep away. Stay away from the barbecue. It's okay, all right? It's fine. It's done. Time. Amazing. I mean, Dad just launched a barbecue into space. <laughs> Dad has been acting weird lately, even for him. Oh, you're telling me. He woke me up in the middle of the night last night to talk about existentialism vis-a-vis -vis tool time. <laughs> Dad actually used the term vis-a-vis? -vis? Oh, yeah. Then he had this great revelation coming out of the bathroom. If a man flushes the toilet and no one's around to notice it, did it really flush? <laughs> Boy, does he need this vacation. Yeah, I wish we were going up there tonight. Lauren and her family are already up at the lake. Did she talk to her? Yeah, she says the weather's perfect, the butter's nice. The only thing missing is moi. <laughs> That's French for me. <laughs> What's French for barf? Mark, did you remember to pack your bathing suit? Here, let me check. What is the deal with you wearing nothing but black clothes lately? I like black. He's trying to create an image for himself, you know, bleak and desperate. <laughs> it's working. 
Boys, go upstairs and get your suitcases. I want to pack the car tonight so we don't have to do that in the morning. Oh, hi. Hi. What a great day, huh? Did some soul searching. Had a brand new power soaker. <laughs> and my barbecue grill was spotted over Roswell, New Mexico. <laughs> Life is good. Life sucks. <laughs> What's wrong? Angela broke up with me. I thought she was crazy about you. Yeah, she was. Now she's crazy about some guy with a brand new Firebird. Oh, Brad. With a V8? <laughs> Mom, I can't go on this trip. I'm too bummed out. Come on, son. It'd do you no good to sit around here and mope. Well, your dad's right. Come to the lake and mope. <laughs> You'll have no time to mope. None of you guys will. Because I have a great big surprise for all of you when we get up there. Guess what it is? Seeing Angela up there is the only surprise that will make me happy. Okay, hint number one. <laughs> this surprise won't make Brad happy. <laughs> Come on, guess what the surprise is? Anybody? Uh, once we get there, you'll start acting like a sane person. <laughs> Way off. Guess again. <laughs> We've spent the last four hours guessing. Still not even close. Yeah. Nanner, nanner, nanner. Oh. All right. Oh. Now, Tim, just think about this for a second. If we get the surprise, we will be depriving you of the thrill of surprising us, and you'll be depriving us the joy of experiencing your surprise. Profound, but not profound enough vis-a-vis -vis the quid pro quo. <laughs> quid pro quo? <laughs> It's beautiful. It's exactly the same. Well, not exactly. They fixed the plumbing, so now to turn the faucet doesn't sound like mating whales. I'm going over to see Lauren. Oh, no, 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 no. I want you all unpacked before anyone goes anywhere. And no one's going to fight over the good bed. What does it matter? I'm going to cry into my pillow no matter where I sleep. <laughs> That's the spirit. <laughs> Hey boys, boys, just put the spring back in the mattress. Put some duct tape over it, all right? Any more lip, you'll just have to wait longer for that surprise. Hey, are you relaxed? Boy, am I relaxed. No, I, I, I'm a wreck. My oldest son is heartbroken and my youngest son is dressing like Johnny Cash. We're teenagers, honey, they're doing the same stuff we used to do. It is much harder to be a teenager nowadays. No, things are much faster, it's more competitive, peer pressure's much more intense. Jill, Jill, we're on vacation. And more importantly, I'm on vacation. Hello? Oh, hi, Lauren. Is Randy around? Randy. Ah, uh, for the love of Mike! <laughs> I knew we forgot something. Hey, hi. I missed you. I missed you, too. I came over by boat with my friend and my little sister. Do you want to go for a ride? Sure. Whoa, 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 whoa. friend, sister. You know we have extra boys around here. <laughs> I don't think Brad and Mark are going to be in the mood for that. Really? Brad, Mark, there's girls down the lake that want to meet you. <laughs> right, hey, Lauren. Hi, Brad. I love being with you on the lake. I love being with you anywhere. <laughs> You're really different from me, brothers. You're so... Dark? <laughs> yeah. I like dark. How do you feel about dark? <laughs> you know, Jenny, I'm not just interested in looks. A girl's got to have a personality. That's why Angela was so perfect. <laughs> it's nice to hear. Again. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll stop talking about her. You know, I don't know what's so great about Angela anyways. As I recall, she was a blonde goddess who cleaned your room and worshipped the ground you walked on. You're right. She was awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I just can't wait till we get to be alone. Alone? 
I guess when it comes down to it, all of us are alone. <laughs> you shut up. a big piece of meat. Good thing they redid the plumbing. How come your girls didn't join us for dinner, fellas? Oh, probably because they're still picking kelp out of their ears. <laughs> Jenny hated me. Think I talked about Angela too much? Right, you did 20 minutes on how nice her teeth were. Oh, I'd love to watch her chew. Mm, shut up. Guys, come on. It's not fight. We're in a place we all love. It's almost time for that surprise. Oh, thank God. I'm so sick of the surprise. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it costs. I just want to be over. Well, it will be. As soon as we have dinner, all I got to do is light these coals. No! <laughs> Woo! No biggies. Follow me. What you step. What you step. We're almost there. Okay. Uncover your eyes. This is the big surprise? This is the old lot. That's right. I haven't used it in about 10 years. Well, you can tell. There's broken windows, cobwebs everywhere. I'm loose with one antler. <laughs> I know it doesn't look like much, but it will after we fix it up. We? Oui. We're going to buy this place. We're going to what? We're going to buy this place, sell our house, say goodbye to Detroit, and move up here. Surprise! <laughs> up here? Yeah. Redo the lodge, fix up the cabins. By this time next year, we'll be living up here. It'll be a whole new start for all of us. Dad, I'm 15 years old. I haven't even finished up my old start. <laughs> Tim, you can't be serious. We're not. Everyone in this family has told me how much they want to live up here someday. Yeah, when we're 80. <laughs> 80's just around the corner, little man. What's the difference where we live? I carry my emotional baggage with me. Boys, um, I, I, would you just uh, leave us alone for a minute? I need to talk to your dad. Talk may not do the trick. Go with electroshock. All right, honey, I know what you're thinking. This is gonna be rough on the boys, but you and I can get him over the hump. Honey, did it ever occur to you that we have this little thing back in Detroit called the life? Yeah, that's moving too fast, you said it. The, the boys are way too competitive. Too much peer pressure. But I don't want to leave it all behind. What about my psychology degree? I'm supposed to get my master's this year. That's why we don't move till next year. I've done all the legwork, honey. There's plenty of nutcases up here you can shrink. <laughs> Louie at the bait shop. Flanco. What about total time? It's time for a change. You know, it'll be the best year ever. And I'll just hand my tool belt down down. I have to add a few more notches. <laughs> this, this whole plan is just insane. I mean, I, I, I don't want to be uprooted from my home and everything that we've worked so hard for. Are you saying you don't like this idea? I hate this idea. Oh, come on, Tim. You didn't consult any of us. You didn't consider our feelings. That's the surprise. <laughs> the surprise will be the day you do. <laughs> I was just trying to do something for my family, and apparently you don't appreciate it. Well, any normal person would see why I don't. Well, maybe I'm not normal. Maybe. <laughs> I'm going for a walk. Whoa, what a beautiful sandcastle. Well, thank you, my beachcombing neighborette. Wilson, what are you doing here? I got a call late last night that cabin number four had opened up. Apparently, Reverend Hicks checked out in a huff. Something about a full moon? Tim. Oh. So, where is your splendiferous spouse? Oh, I don't know where he is. Lately, I don't know who he is. Yesterday, when we got up here, he announced that he wants us all to move here. Now that you mention it, he has been acting a bit odd lately. He told me the other day he was considering becoming a part-time physicist. Tim? Mm -hmm. Said he wants to contemplate the origins of the universe. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and every other Friday. What's the deal with him? He's all over the place lately. Well, 
You know, Tim reminds me of the poet, Lord Byron. Byron? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the only poem Tim knows starts with Hickory Dickory Dock. <laughs> no, 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 just see. Byron noted that men of Tim's life experience suddenly go through difficult times, and they respond in strange ways. Byron said, of all the barbarous Middle Ages, that which is most barbarous is the Middle Age of man. So you're saying that Tim's having a midlife crisis? Well, I'm not sure about that. I do know he is at an age where he has to come to grips with his own mortality. Uh, I don't know, Wilson. It's not like Tim's wearing gold chains and has a bond on each arm. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> well, the truth is that every man struggles with middle age in his own unique way. Castle. Yeah. Well, I'm just killing time. I've been waiting here for hours for your father to come out of the water. <sighs> yep. We always wait for the ones we love. <laughs> Brad, you're still young. You meet other girls. I don't know how will any of these other girls measure up to Angela. Honey, I know this sounds trite, but it does happen to everybody. You're going to find your true love just like I did. A back. And I got crabs. <laughs> That's true love. I'm better off alone. Now they look at them and they're actually crawdads. I don't care what they are. Get them away from me. Oh, messed up again? Tim, wait. Hold on. I want to say something to you. Okay, go ahead. Give it to me. Um, you know your whole dream about moving up here? Yeah. I shouldn't have dismissed it out of hand. So you don't think it's such a bad idea? Yeah, I do. Uh. But you don't, and, and I should respect that. I mean, you obviously want to make some pretty big changes in your life. No, I feel like wiping the slate clean and starting over. Does this have anything to do with us? No, oh, come on, no, not at all. I just need new challenges. Well, there's nothing wrong with new challenges. You have to trash everything else that's working. I just, I just know that there, there's, a, there's a lot of things I want to do. And if I don't start doing them now, I'll never get them done. You know, Tim, sometimes when a guy gets to be your age, he goes through this, um, I don't know, uh, midlife crisis. Stop. I'm not going through a midlife crisis. If I was, I'd be driving a Porsche with a blonde named Chrissy. <laughs> this doesn't sound like a half bad idea. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you don't have to be dating Chrissy to be going through this. There are other symptoms. Like what? Like... Wanting to give up full time and become a physicist? That's only part time. <laughs> you see how the boys are growing? You got a new job? Just left in the dust using foreign phrases ad nauseum. So you feel like everyone else is moving forward and you're just standing still? Maybe. Like. Life is just meaningless uh, without hope. Well, sort of like a shell of the man you I'm once not a were. Not a shell full of, of desperation. I'm full of pain. desperation, honey. I get the point. It's not quite that bad. Okay. I'm going through a tough time, and I'll figure out a way to deal with this. Can you deal with this without buying a lodge? I'll try, but I want to leave that option open. Okay. And you know, it's not like you're going to have to go through it alone. I'll be there with you. Yeah? Yeah. I want you around when I start going through those hot flashes. Oh. <laughs> Hope you'll be sensitive. I'll try. I'll try not to burst out laughing when you wake up with a goatee. <laughs> I appreciate that. I love you. Oh. What? Did you shave this morning? <laughs> It is so beautiful here. It would be nice to live here someday. Lou at the bait shop's counting on you. <laughs> Do you really go around looking for crazy people? I don't have to. They find me. <laughs> well, you should go back and start dinner. Okay. Oh. Ooh, something smells so good. Somebody's barbecuing. Can 
Boys! Boys! Shove up that spring back in the mattress, put some duct tape over it. Does everybody know what time it is? <laughs> That's right. Welcome to a brand new season. Bid for Tools is proud to present Tim the Tool Man Taylor. Thank you. Thank you, Heidi. Welcome to a new season. I think, therefore, I am Tim the Tool Man Taylor. <laughs> of course, you all know my assistant. He eats, therefore, he is Al Borland. Well, we have a sizzling hot show for you today, so let's get cooking. It's Barbecue Week here on Tool Time. Well, barbecuing goes back to primitive times when cavemen rubbed two sticks together to cook their carcass du jour. <laughs> Nothing like an all-you-can-eat brontosaurus buffet. <laughs> but stay clear of that pudding. Plonko. <laughs> well, nowadays, you can cook your meat on this $3 portable unit, or cook like a king with this $35,000 gas cooking unit. Built-in dishwasher, disposal, CD player, and a pinch. An automatic hibachi cook. <laughs> but for the purists, there's nothing like charcoal. They think the true measure of a man is how fast he can light his coals. Ah, yeah. <laughs> of course, a woman thinks it's how long a man can keep his coals lit. <laughs> Well, there's a gentleman in Indiana who used liquid oxygen, got his charcoal ready in three seconds. Yeah, but there's a very handsome guy right here in Detroit that says he can beat that record. Well, you may be wondering how Tim's going to beat that three-second record. Well, I'm not wondering. I got a hold of some of my buddies down at NASA. They gave me their secret. Rocket fuel. <laughs> Rocket fuel's made with locks. And this don't go on no bagel, baby. <laughs> this is liquid oxygen with a skosh of hydrogen. And for fun, a little soup song of cilantro for flavor. <laughs> for trained professionals, please do not try this at home. Ah, there you go. Heidi, my fire starting device, please. Here you go, Tim. Very high tech. It's a stick. <laughs> Two point six seconds, Woo! a new world's record! Tim, it's a little out of control. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't Tim, keep, keep it. away. Stay away from the barbecue. It's okay, all right? It's fine. It's done. Time. Amazing. I mean, Dad just launched a barbecue into space. <laughs> Dad has been acting weird lately, even for him. Oh, you're telling me. He woke me up in the middle of the night last night to talk about existentialism vis-a-vis -vis toll time. <laughs> Dad actually used the term vis-a-vis? -vis? Oh, yeah. Then he had this great revelation coming out of the bathroom. If a man flushes the toilet and no one's around to notice it, did it really flush? <laughs> Boy, does he need this vacation. Yeah, I wish we were going up there tonight. Lauren and her family are already up at the lake. Did she talk to her? 
Yeah, she says the weather's perfect, the butter's nice. The only thing missing is moi. <laughs> That's French for me. <laughs> What's French for barf? Mark, did you remember to pack your bathing suit? Yeah, let me check. What is the deal with you wearing nothing but black clothes lately? I like black. He's trying to create an image for himself, you know, bleak and desperate. It's working. Boys, go upstairs and get your suitcases. I want to pack the car tonight so we don't have to do that in the morning. Oh, hi. Hi. Had a great day, huh? Did some soul searching. Had a brand new power soaker. And my barbecue grill was spotted over Roswell, New Mexico. <laughs> Life is good. Life sucks. What's wrong? Angela broke up with me. I thought she was crazy about you. Yeah, she was. Now she's crazy about some guy with a brand new firebird. Oh, Brad. With a V8? <laughs> Mom, I can't go on this trip. I'm too bummed out. Come on, son. It'd do you no good to sit around here and mope. Well, your dad's right. Come to the lake and mope. <laughs> You'll have no time to mope. None of you guys will. Because I have a great big surprise for all of you when we get up there. Guess what it is? Seeing Angela up there is the only surprise that will make me happy. Okay, hint number one. This surprise won't make Brad happy. <laughs> Come on, guess what the surprise is. Anybody. Uh, once we get there, you'll start acting like a... Does everybody know what time it is? <laughs> That's right. Welcome to a brand new season. Bid for Tools is proud to present Tim the Tool Man Taylor. Thank you. Thank you, Heidi. Welcome to a new season. I think, therefore, I am Tim the Tool Man Taylor. <laughs> of course, you all know my assistant. He eats, therefore, he is Al Borland. Well, we have a sizzling hot show for you today, so let's get cooking. It's barbecue week here on Tool Time. Well, barbecuing goes back to primitive times when cavemen rubbed two sticks together to cook their carcass du jour. <laughs> Nothing like an all-you-can-eat brontosaurus buffet. <laughs> but stay clear of that pudding. Plonko. <laughs> well, nowadays, you can cook your meat on this $3 portable unit or cook like a king with this $35,000 gas cooking unit. Built-in dishwasher, disposal, CD player, and a pinch. <laughs> An automatic hibachi cook. <laughs> but for the purists, there's nothing like charcoal. They think the true measure of a man is how fast he can light his coals. Ah, yeah. And of course, a woman thinks it's how long a man can keep his coals lit. <laughs> Well, there's a gentleman in Indiana who used liquid oxygen, got his charcoal ready in three seconds. Yeah, but there's a very handsome guy right here in Detroit that says he can beat that record. Well, you may be wondering how Tim's going to beat that three-second record. Well, I'm not wondering. I got a hold of some of my buddies down at NASA. They gave me their secret. Rocket fuel. <laughs> Rocket fuel's made with locks. And this don't go on no bagel, baby. <laughs> this is liquid oxygen with a scosh of hydrogen. And for fun, a little soup song of cilantro for flavor. For trained professionals, please do not try this at home. Ah, there you go. Heidi, my fire starting device, please. Here you go, Tim. Very high tech. It's a stick. <laughs>
Okay, I'm all packed. How was the tool time? Amazing. I mean, Dad just launched a barbecue into space. <laughs> Dad has been acting weird lately, even for him. Oh, you're telling me. He woke me up in the middle of the night last night to talk about existentialism vis-a-vis -vis tool time. <laughs> Dad actually used the term vis-a-vis? -vis? Oh, yeah. Then he had this great revelation coming out of the bathroom. If a man flushes the toilet and no one's around to notice it, did it really flush? <laughs> Boy, does he need this vacation. Yeah, I wish we were going up there tonight. Lauren and her family are already up at the lake. Did she talk to her? Yeah, she says the weather's perfect, the water's nice. The only thing missing is moi. <laughs> That's French for me. <laughs> What's French for barf? Mark, did you remember to pack your bathing suit? Here, let me check. What is the deal with you wearing nothing but black clothes lately? I like black. He's trying to create an image for himself, you know, bleak and desperate. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> Boys, go upstairs and get your suitcases. I want to pack the car tonight so we don't have to do that in the morning. Oh, hi. Hi. What a great day, huh? Did some soul searching. Had a brand new power soaker. And my barbecue grill was spotted over Roswell, New Mexico. 